Good evening everyone, thanks a lot for joining me. We are back, I'm just making sure I've got everything out and closed. Thanks again guys for joining me live. <clears throat> I can see a bunch of you here already. Hope you enjoyed the video I dropped yesterday, the old uh, depth charge. Had good fun with that, um, had good fun making the thumbnail as well. <laughs> just had a random idea and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and mess about with this stuff, try to get a bit more kind of interesting. Uh, so, hey, hope you enjoyed it. It's a really fun video, I really enjoyed making it. And see, since making it, the amount of developments that have happened, the amount of developments that have been brought to my attention that I previously missed, is crazy. I could probably do it, and I was actually thinking this today when I was driving about, I'll probably in like maybe two weeks or something, I'll maybe do like an annex video and just kind of update and refresh this a little bit because there's a few, and we'll probably touch on it, you know, as we go through the stream tonight. Um, but there's, yeah, I say there's been a few uh, changing developments and some new information has been brought to my attention, which is lovely. Um, Robert Turner, good to see you. One more game week for you. And then it's goalkeeper time. Misaki's in the house. We're all rocking. Uh, Evans in the house as well. XMK. I bumped. Good to see you. Moldy boy. Hoodwink. Jonathan Roberts. 5 a.m. where you are. Jesus. Um, just had an evening run and waiting for my pizza to come. Nice. Well, Joe, I had a barbecue today. I had a barbecue. Got some beef burgers. They were called. Um, they were like beef, right? But it said like maple flavoured or something. Um, I thought that's interesting because I like like the maple. Por I, I don't again show my true colours sometimes um, I like the, the maple pork belly you get it at Aldi um, <laughs> it's fucking amazing on a barbecue man but the barbecue the, the burgers were good but I didn't really notice any anything maple about it to be honest with you 
home from work, shower just in time for the quiz stuff. <laughs> Sounds like a date. <laughs> um, it's been a long day, man. Um, it's always good when the weather's nice, eh? Uh, makes it such a difference. And do you know, I was actually cruising into this stream thinking, basically at this time yesterday, thinking, teams kind of say, I'd done it two or three times, I'd kind of tried to test myself after listening to some podcasts and whatever, and thought, no, I'm quite happy with what I'm set. And then today, <coughs> there must be about four or five different things have happened where I'm going to need to readjust so much. <laughs> I'm going to need to readjust so much. I'm going to be going through, um, I'm going to take a bit more of a fixture based approach on this one. So, I'll do all the usual stuff, but we don't have any so rare data activity really. You know, I've not got a game week. I'm coming out of. I had nothing to enter for this game week, which is why we just ran the AMA on Monday, which I hope you enjoyed. By the way, I hope that was good, good fun for you, even if you didn't catch it live. And again, if you're watching this after we've been live, thank you very much for clicking on the video, and I hope you have a good time while you're here. Um, you can check back once the video's been fully processed. It takes YouTube maybe about like twelve hours or something. But once the video's been fully processed, the live chat you can actually watch it back. So sometimes if I'm referencing something somebody said. Depending on how far you are down the video and depending on, um, you know, the live chat's up to date with the video, you know, so every minute you're at, it, you know, you'll see something in there that I'm probably referring to. In terms of questions or people or, you know, whatever. Um, but, oh, Marky Boy's in the house. Good to see you, my man. Simply Alex. Uh, Simply Alex, you have been dropping some videos. I caught one or two of them. Very good. Keep it coming, my man. Um, Mikey Basson, as always. Moldy. Woody Baggies, good to see you. You're back in town now that Snoddy's in um, <laughs> Snoddy's in training. So that's one piece of information. Maybe I could, maybe I should be considering to put Snodgrass in my challenger Euro midfielder options. Maybe, you know what I mean? If he plays 30 games in the championship, Snoddy can be dangerous. Massive set piece taker, always liable for a key pass and an assist, you know. And, uh, ah, yeah, so, yeah, Baggy, good to see you. Mark, I say, very, very glad to see you in the house, man. Thanks for joining us. Be interested to, to get your thoughts on the game week, if how stacked you are. And, do you know what I noticed the special week like this game week is it's Argentinian and Brazilian nationals only. And I thought it was really interesting because, like, um, in MLS, there is, like, a lot of nationals for both. You know, you've got the goalkeeper for the Red Bulls, that, that uh, Colonel or Colonel, or I don't know how you say his name, Colonel or whatever. Um, there'd be an option, and I'm sure there's a couple options here and there. But um, yeah, so some people might have an amazing special weekly team if you had a bunch of like MLS Brazilians. I think that's what I was thinking. Like you'd have like Joe Paulo in midfield. You probably have a defender from Orlando, maybe Ant Antonio Carlos. I don't know if he's playing at the moment, but they've got a few Brazilian defenders. Um, I'm sure there's, there'll be another one. No, I don't think there's Brazilians. In fact, you've got Argentinians, you know, so you could have like Valenzuela or something like that, and then up front you've got guys like. Brenner and we'll come to Cincinnati I'll be maybe trying to predict their team this week and uh, Joe Paulo in midfield and I say there's somebody else I think there's maybe somebody in Philly that's Brazilian that's okay in Columbus maybe no, I don't think Columbus do have any Brazilians um, maybe the Red Bulls have got one but yeah so interesting special weekly it's not quite for me I'm not quite a you know, goalkeeper to pull it off um, but just one that I've thought some bigger accounts guys that just have more of a head count you know Mark McBride is probably the one I was really thinking about so, oh, he might have a sneaky wee team out I don't know if Mark will be catching his live or not unless it's past his bed time uh, two, only two goalkeepers for Marky Boy I think I outdo you on the goalkeeper front which is a rare occurrence I must say and yes way Jose <laughs> good to see you my man Matty Boy's in the house as well who do you think is bought Sean Johnson as his MLS keeper so we'll finally have a full team once he's back from Gold Cup Boom, brilliant. Uh, big fan of my Sean Johnson. Um, well, without any further ado, guys, let's just dive into some SO5, okay? So, have I bought anything? I'm going to say no. I don't think I've done any dealings for a lot of while. I've just got my cards that I won. Yeah, I've not done anything at all. Uh, so, the game week itself, when I seen the fixtures, I, I was actually quite gutted that Saul played midweek. Um, the Korean team, I know that there's a bit of a hiatus in some parts of Asia at the moment, but I think some teams that have fixtures to catch up, like Gamba, yeah, Gamba are playing... No one else is. In China, we're getting some matches. So I might have Sunjic knocking about. Um, and the, the, the Argentina's one. I've not got any players. I, say, I think I say this every Thursday. I need to look at the Argentinian division um, in much more detail because I've just not got a scooby doing. I'm sure there's going to be some banging cards that are running about every, all these game weeks and I'm just totally sleeping on them, man. Yeah, so that's all there is, actually. It's just really MLS and a bit of um, Argentina, Brazil. Oh, J League, we do have a few fixtures actually. What was I thinking about? Is there? I think one of the kid. I'm sure one of the leagues is taking a kind of mini hiatus. Um, I don't know if this is part of it. It's maybe, it's maybe staggered potentially or something. 
don't know where I got that in my head from. We'll come back to that because we'll be on. We'll, I'll jump on the flash scores in a minute and pan out the fixtures. So I'll show you. Well, I'll show you what I've got, or will I just bin it all? I'll open up flash scores and I'll think about it, and you guys let me know in the comment section. Bin it all and not show you what I've done already, or show you what I've done and kind of work through it. But that's probably actually the more sensible option. I just think about time, so I think it's probably quite a short stream if I just go through everything and edit it. So I could just probably do that in two or three moves. Whereas, like, I think sometimes when you do need to make kind of wholesale changes rather than doing that kind of surgery, sometimes it's better just wiping the slate clean and just going, right, fuck it. That striker's not playing anymore, that defender's in question, that goalkeeper's now, whatever. Um, and then just treat it as if that never happened because that's the situation you're now in is it's as good as never happened you know <laughs> um, because you can't carry it into the game week so that's it uh, yeah that's what I'd be thinking about so let's look at MLS so MLS is where all my cards are primarily uh, I've got a few Gamba cards which I'm only going to use if absolutely necessary um, but we've got Atlanta against the Revs now Atlanta this is kind of where my problems begin if I'm honest where Heinz has been quoted as saying like he's got a problem with Joseph so He's training by himself. He's been training by himself over a week. And I don't know, man. Like, it's so bizarre. And like, the thread I read, there was people talking about, like, oh, it's a great way to get sacked as a manager and all the rest of it. But I think I think he's been doing okay, Heinz. He signed a lot of the players. Um, but they do need, like, a Joseph or something. So if he's, like, offended the manager or something like that, I hope he just uh, fucking apologises, you know, if, that's, if it's something like that. What I kind of thought was maybe something to do with when he was on international duty. Maybe he just felt disrespected or something. I don't know. Maybe he's just trying to, you know, stamp his authority because he is, like, so important to the team. Maybe he doesn't want him getting too big for his boots. Might be one of those situations. So it's a really hard one to gauge. And now I just, I really can't play Joseph in good conscience, knowing that he's been training himself and the recent quotes from the manager. I think I'd have to be fucking mental to play in a serious team you know I might if I'm stretching out a punt team and I need a super rare then I'll definitely throw them at it but um, so, so sore because I was waiting I thought this will be the fixture Matt Turner's away from the revs Joseph will come in Atlanta at home beautiful sounds amazing doesn't it it sounds so sweet it sounds so smooth and then just boom no there's a fucking gripe there's a problem in the camp and Yay. <laughs> Yay! Don't you love it? 1.2 East fucking Super Rare, you're still not be able to get a fucking SO5 point from yet. Um, the Bills in Miami. Oh, you can't see these big pop ups. I hate, that's what I hate about going on flash scores way. So what I've got is window capture, and this opens a brand new window, which is the problem. Miami's form is god awful. Phil Neville is under serious pressure. The Bills are starting to pick up. I can tell you that before without even opening it up or whatever anyway, but I don't have much of a contingent for the Bulls. I'm, I'm really just, if I play anyone from that Miami team, I'm just kind of gambling on the, they score a goal and it's an assist for Morgan and a goal for Hig, you know. Montreal-Cincinnati is one that I would encourage any of these with Montreal likely starters to put them in the best team you've got possible. What has happened this week, right, is like, I've seen tweets yesterday and the day before yesterday and they were talking about the Montreal game might just be postponed because... It's like 48 hours to go to the deadline for they need to travel and whatever. And no one knows where the game is. Is it in New York? Is it in this place? Is it in that place? Whatever. And it turns out from what I've from what I've gathered today is uh, it's in Canada. You know, so it sounds like Montreal are at home. And Cincinnati, the only players that can cross the border into Canada are ones that have been vaccinated. So I don't think there's a public record of who in the Cincinnati team has been vaccinated, etc and you know so you're going to be really waiting to hear the travel party come out this being the 15th the deadline being the 16th you might get lucky and just catch the traveling party and avoid any dnps just guys that do not travel and anyone else you're kind of gambling on i suppose but needless to say montreal have been at home training you know i've seen big big victor Wanyama on twitter they've been training they're at home they're buzzing they've been on the road forever they're going to are there fans back in the stadium? I think they might be. Um, so all Montreal, all Montreal, you know, um, is now my POV with that one. Um, let me just catch up with you guys because I know you are catching me up and keep me in the loop. Thanks, mate. Glad you enjoyed the videos. Simply Alex, no, it was good, man. You know, and the content is... I, the, the thing was so rare is it's a game, so different people's manoeuvres and how they're thinking about things and how they're doing things is always always good to hear and get, um, get an angle on. Gamba, I've got a ton of games to make up. You're, you can say that again, Misaki. Um, Mark Connor, evening, just popping in. Oh, no, oh, you're just... Oh, cool. First time on the stream, Mark. Good to join. I was thinking, I do... Mark O'Connor, you Mark O'Leary, I always forget. 
<laughs> but good to see you. I'm sure you're Mark Lely. I always forget Mark's second name. I didn't get my phone on me to check. Um, Mikey Baston. I picked up a George Bell. Brilliant. What a bargain. Point oh eight. Um, really good. Is is he away for Gold Cup? I don't even think he is. By the way, J League is on a break for now. It's just the Champions League teams making up some games. Yeah, got you. Thanks a lot, Masaki, for keeping us right. Uh, Chrissy Quirk, good to see you, my man. Boom, you've been dropping videos as well. I think I missed the last one, but otherwise, I think I'm quite up to date. I liked the one. Oh, Jesus, what was it? You started off, mate. The intro was really well. Like, I can tell you, like, scratched it out, but it was really well put together. Like, I, I loved it, mate. Keep it up. Good work. I loved it. Um, Heinza won't last. Martinez is such a cult hero. You saw the throat. Yeah. Moldy, I might have even seen you participating in this thread that I referenced earlier. So I know a few of the Sorare community were definitely on that thread. Um, I think Football Economist was one of them as well. And yeah, I think that's the kind of chat on social media. But, you know, I hope it is just a bit of posturing and I hope it isn't. Like, Heinze doesn't want to admit that this guy really does have the keys to the castle in terms of the team's success. You know, I hope it's a power play in that sense. And that Joseph just goes, right, fuck it, man. Just play me. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, you are the boss. You know, just do your, just do your bit and get on the fucking pitch. You know what I mean? If that is what it is, who knows? Um, but yeah, I think that's the consensus. But I think he's been doing kind of okay. Like, when I've seen Atlanta, they look good. They've just they, they have always just been that guy's out here. Oh, he's back on oh, now. He's out now. He's out. Oh, he's not fit. He's just back. You know, all that kind of stuff. First time here as well for Jesper. If it's first time in the house, guys, let it be known. Please feel free, everyone who is here, to smash a like on the stream. It means a lot to me. If you've watched this after we've been live, your likes are just as valuable. So please feel free if you have fun tonight, of course, or you learn something, then. Fixture wise, of course, um, then a link would be great. Thank you very much. Uh, feeling like I'm in a stream of celebs. <laughs> I don't get it, Jesper. How come? Oh, because um, yeah, we've got some. Yeah, fantastic. Well, live chats are always good, and the live chats is probably where I'm just going to say about eighty percent of the gold comes from in these streams in terms of the up to date info and the latest things and whatever. Today I've been quite active, so I'll probably up to speed with most things. But there is always something that misses everyone. You know, I'll know. I'll read something and think, oh yeah, that was everywhere. And I'll talk to somebody and they'll be like, oh no, I didn't see any of that. You know, so never assume everyone knows everything. Unless you've seen them on the thread, of course. Um, Columbus and New York is interesting, right? Because both of them have had, like, kind of good... You know, they've, well, they've both, you know, New York, I've been really happy with New York. Columbus have been solid enough, you know, they've not been terrible. But I think people expected Columbus to be a runaway train this year. And they've not quite been, but the last five at home, they've got two draws and three wins in New York away... I've lost the last game in Montreal, but that away game was actually like, I think it was actually in New York or something. It wasn't really an away match. Um, but they beat LA on the road. And they beat Philly on the road. So New York are travelling well these days, you know. So that'll be an interesting game. I think the selection choices for some of the, for both those teams, um, I think Columbus goes balls to the wall strongest. And I think, I think New York will go quite close to the strongest as well. But what you'll maybe see factor in now with that little kind of, we week off is it some of the guys like uh, Andrade potentially Medina should be back from injury hopefully um, some of these guys might play so you might see some regular faces from the bench maybe now get a start is what I'm kind of thinking the Union in DC I've not got much going on there I'm not too bothered about that Toronto and Orlando I think Josie's back if Josie's back in town then my Pozuelo becomes a lot more exciting and I don't know what the script is with Galassi. I think Eloy Room is back from Curacao, so I think if he can be back so quick from a COVID camp, then, uh, oh yeah, that's another thing, by the way, with Columbus, is that Eloy Room is in the building, you know, if you don't know this, Curacao had, like, a COVID outbreak, and they just get, like, disbanded from the tournament, It's just like, listen, this is, you know, you're done. Um, and I don't think he needed to quarantine or whatever, I've seen a tweet go out the next day saying, like, oh, he's, he's here training kind of thing, I think he was back quite quick. So that could be positive if you've got an Eloy Room. Knocking around. Nashville and fire. Nothing to report. Nothing, yeah, nothing new there. And then I think the further down I go down the fixture list, I don't have as many kind of breaking news, last minute changes of circumstances or whatever. So yeah, it's been quite a you know everything I just went through there is like new information that's came to me, and it's totally screwed up um, my plan of attack. Joseph is the the headline, of course, but there's a few other ones knocking around there. Like I actually favour my Montreal cards a lot more now. Um, and the Cincinnati cards I have anyway are away on Costa Rica duty so it doesn't really mean much I uh, Torgis I'm going to say this on stream I'm going to say it once I think Tavon Gray starts in the back three um, in this match coming up and Ibiaga 
like I watched his I watched the game he just played was it Montreal um, or whatever I, I, it, it was crap like he really wasn't good so I don't I, Tavon Gray when he played he only got 60 minutes but I was quite impressed with him I thought he looked good uh, Hendo good to see my man Pew. fist bump <clears throat> um, IB Aga is probably I, I, I guess he might uh, he might be in like the expected team or whatever but I think Tavon Gray starts to that one um, and we'll see. we'll see I think they go back three again and just with who's actually in the squad now, there's no James Sands at the moment. Might even go back four, by the way, because they are away from home and without Sands. If they've got Callens back, if Galassi's back, then maybe Callens is back too. Maybe Callens Gal- Cal- gets a wee bit of a recovery period because he did actually, like, he was an outfield player, did play quite a lot. Uh, Sean's fire stack goes again. It definitely does. Who did Fire have again? Um, fire are waiting in Asheville. Yeah, well, that's... I think they've still got Leal. They've just signed somebody, haven't they? They've just signed a guy, a DP guy from Mexico that everyone's talking about. Koba or Kubi or Yobo or... Can't, it's a wee four-letter name. I can't remember it. Any tips for buying a, a, a specific player that you want who isn't listed without advertising the player? Want to keep it on the down low. Um, yeah, I will... What I would normally do, if I'm looking for any player, right? Let me just pull a name off my board, right? I'll just pull one and we'll go for it. Um, and what do we want? None are listed. Let's go for Musiala, right? Let's say I wanted a Musiala. How many for sale? Is it a lot? No. There's one, right? There's only one Musiala for sale, and he's up at 0.86, right? Um. Let's just kid on. That's nowhere near your budget. You're looking at half a coin, let's say, or something. What I'd be doing is going around and looking at some of the people that have maybe bought in a mid-term. So if anyone who's had them for like four or five months, I think, at this point. Yeah, anyone who's had them, maybe not four months, but around the July, March. Yeah, anyone who's had them really since like February, March, I think they're in. They're keeping them now for the season coming, um, by and large, because they've had multiple opportunities to sell at this stage. People who are quite new in the door... And people that haven't been a holder for too long, so I would definitely think like three months and less. I think they are able to be gotten at in terms of trade potential, whatever. Because you know, I, that, that's just my personal opinion. So I'd be looking for people who jobs NT is probably not going to be selling. Kiss me, miss me, probably won't sell either. Um, you know, then if you know the people, if you've heard them on a podcast, you've seen them on a YouTube video or whatever, um, then maybe you've got an idea of what they're like and what they're about. Are they open to negotiation? Are they quite a serious SO5 player? You know, why did they buy things? And so that's, that can be good to know sometimes as well. But yeah, so I'd then be looking at Musiala is quite a scarce example. So he's not had that many cards, it must be said. In the grand scheme of things, you might be looking at somebody who's been on the platform for two seasons already or has two seasons worth of cards available to them. Um, somebody who's won them within the last two months. Maybe if somebody wins them fresh, you know, like you catch somebody who wins them like this week or something. Three months ago, they're probably keeping, you know. And again, I'm only assuming at this point, Nanzo, four months ago, he's probably keeping that, isn't he? Um, so that's what I would kind of do is kind of try and fish through the ones that look the most likely. You know, could they be moved? You know, can they be up for trade plus ETH? Maybe you know, and maybe sacrifice a little bit because you don't have the point eight of the guy that's or the point eight six for the guy that's selling it. Um, then you need to do that if you don't quite have the full leaf to go that way you know maybe you've only got point three and then you have to give away half a coin's worth of cards you know I don't know yeah that's just my what came to my mind when you asked me that Benny YTB good to see my man boom Torgis no problem my man uh, any idea of Akindele of Orlando's any good he's been MLS striker so hopefully not a dud uh, Akindele's been playing uh, he's definitely like a high energy forward and he uh, Akindele's one of these ones that I was last season I was surprised how often he played and how often he started I've not been too close to Orlando this year so far um, but last year I was surprised at how much he played and how much the manager favours him they've still got the same manager they've been doing very well and as far as I'm aware he has still been playing and been doing well so in general I'd say yeah he's a, he's a, he's a good player to have you know if you, if you have him and you bought him for that purpose then yeah I can see him doing well who's Orlando's fixture this week that might be interesting because I've also got um Galassi as well away to Toronto yes that's funny so I spoke about that before with like Armas being out what you kind of find happening and this might sound a wee bit stupid right but like I know from like coaching teams and managing football teams like 
the players that you'll, you will always have a contingent of players in a dressing room that you know have a, a very strong opinion on football and can contribute brilliantly to the team and and everything as well but when what things don't go their way then you know it should be a kind of balance between manager and players if that makes sense and then when the results aren't coming player suggestions then the, the kind of perception they get is that they should carry more weight all of a sudden which sometimes isn't sometimes it isn't the case but anyway that armis obviously fell out with the dressing room and they were all thinking what this guy's doing just isn't he for us you know in whatever way it was Josie fell out he was leaving what the fuck's going on now the manager's left he's straight back in and it looks like all things are rosy and then those players they'll just be getting together and going listen boys we just need to do A, B and C and look at us we will we will beat teams you know and I think if we get that Toronto where it's like the dressing room run the pitch if that makes sense I think they could be really dangerous like I think their form could just flip on a knife edge um, Orlando are a really good team so if they got a good result from Orlando I would think that's a really strong indicator on good form about to come on every, on the basis of everything I've just kind of spewed out there um, so I can daily sorry <laughs> is I can daily a good forward let's punch him into so we're data so we're on this site a bit today as well I can daily so let's have a wee peek yeah the last five seems okay cheap enough low risk yeah it's just getting minutes on the pitch but I think last season like, he did get a good run of games and I was quite surprised how often he was in the team you know um but yeah, when he gets to these all with decisives, yeah, he's not about decisives, won't he? But he has a forward player, he's, I see he's high energy, you know, and if you're around and if DK and Nanny are all getting assists and goals and whatever, this guy will also be part of that jigsaw, you know, like, we're, you know, the this whole Firestack thing's becoming a trope on multiple channels now, it would seem, but, um, <laughs> but the thing with, like, any kind of stack or whatever is you're hoping the jackpot is that they all interlock together, you know, this guy assists his goal and then he assists this guy's goal. And then he makes a last man tackle to save his big mistake, or you know, <laughs> and they all kind of, and then they all get the clean sheet, and you know, they get the win and whatever else. Um, that's the ideal thing. But anyway, I can daily could be, and this is an interesting dynamic to think about some cards, and I, I guess maybe until this moment I've probably done it a, a little bit subconsciously. But some of these people, you think they might not be a standout player, they might not be like a Pozuelo or a Vela or one of these types of levels of cards. But if you were to build an SO five team. A stack of a club around a card like that. There's guys just like Akindeli that you would drop in around them that you would pick up for this type of price and fit them around more expensive cards and just then try and maximise a team situation or some sort of dynamic like that. But equally, those cards in isolation can still offer you the same benefit SO5 wise. Like, if the benefit of them in that stack is that they bring home 60 to 65 points, well, guess what? Somebody that can bring home 60 to 65 points with a decisive. We'll do that in any team. It doesn't matter if the players around them are also Orlando or if they're from Kawasaki or Liverpool. It doesn't mean anything, you know. So, I, I, you know, cards like this, I think they can kind of, you know, people aren't always excited about some players they really should be. Like a guy that, and I'm not saying this guy is, don't get me wrong, but he's got very few DNPs and he's in a team that will hit playoffs and cards of that kind of profile. I think you can be surprised. I think that's probably the moral of the story here. You can be surprised at how much you can you can get out of them mileage wise, you know. Uh, Shrew is in the house. Good to see my man. Shrew, are you, have you renamed yourself? Is this Shrewsbury from before? Renamed? Um, bum, 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 bum. Myth Pit. Uh, what's your strategy on selling when there is appreciation? I, e.g., I picked up a token. Very good buy. But is now going for triple. I wonder why that is. Thinking to keep him as he probably has good future utility but wanted to pick your brain. I mentioned him on the stream a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, maybe both weeks. Um, but I heard a quote come out of like some uh, some outlet somewhere anyway, I forget exactly which one. And they said that the coaches at New York Red Bulls talk about um, John Tolkien and Caden Clark in the same way that they, speak, they, they spoke about Tyler Adams and um, somebody else. I can't remember who Tyler Adams Tyler Adams Caden Clark John Tolkien they all kind of get spoken about in the same breath there might have been another player in that equation um, and his SO5 scores are really good like um, we're still on so data yes we are Tolkien so um, if you need an MLS defender like Red Bull's like I was really tempted to, and it's really just because I like New York City so much that I didn't buy any Red Bulls players but I thought if they have a proper Red Bull coach in charge which they currently do and that was a situation as of the playoffs last season um, so the guys had more than enough time to bed in 
then um, they will return to form because that's all the all the Red Bull clubs are about is playing a system. They buy players specifically for that, and as long as they've got a good coach in charge of that system, you can expect a relatively consistent turnout in terms of at least football performance. You know what they're going to do, and you know they might get some goals and assists and whatever. Um, but it, probably the main reason his prices went up so much is because he's just hit that without a decisive. You know, um, he's just been a really solid fullback in the match and done really well, and you know, no assists or nothing. So that's always positive to see from someone so young and someone who is also so highly thought of. I really like his rookie card. I think uh, or his last season's card anyway. I think I looked at it at the time. I'm not gonna pull it up, but I very much like him. So in terms of my strategy on that, let's see what he's actually going for. We got that actually on Sora there. Yeah. So best offer at the moment point one oh four, and that's triple what you paid for him. Congratulations, you've had him for over a month. So well done, team. And bought him nice and early. So like a hundred cards. He's obviously still got this season's coming out. Um. Do I think you could buy this guy cheaper than that from auction? Probably yes, but not. But it depends what your strategy is. Like a guy like this, I wouldn't want to sell because of like you know I've got Mark McKenzie. Hopefully this year going to be number one centre, one of the number one centre backs at Brew um, at Ghent, uh, this season, and I like having that journey with my cards. You know, so if I had a guy like him, that would be his journey. You know, that I would have him for. If I don't want to go on that journey with him, then I sell him. You know, at a point of profit. Is the point of profit? After he hits his first deep green, I'm going to say no. I think you know if he gets an R, if he gets his last five into the sixties or seventies at any stage, then you know name your price for that category. MLS under twenty three defender. We've just seen guys like Tanner Testman. This is another thing as well. Tanner Testman is signed for Venezia today. You've probably all seen that. And um, Sam Vines, your man's got super rare of, has uh, just moved to Antwerp. To it would seem who had amazing defenders on so rare last year, so I think Sam Vines has just levelled up for me. And you know, I was thinking, I might have this amazing under-23 partnership of Sam Vines and Hakimi. It's <laughs> two super rare under-23 fullbacks. That would be fucking sick, wouldn't it? Um, Josh Forth is in the house. Good to see you, my man. As always. Um, so and that's my kind of thoughts on John Token. If you want to go down that journey with him, then you're kind of in it now. If you've bought him at a great price, you can enjoy that journey with very little in terms of regret, in terms of input. And then you're just looking for the best opportunity to sell. And then it's just where in that journey you want to do that. And if you're not up for that journey, you're just I think you're just waiting for the last five to get a bit better. Because I think um, all he needs is another couple of games that are greens. And with that 76, his last five average naturally will go up. You know, so... Um, and that subsequently then turns this into, I don't know, 0 0.15 or 0 0.14, 0 0.18, you know, depending on where the market's at. I'm not well up on that for that specific profile. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, I think I'm up to date with everyone else. Aaron, my competition winner, good to see you, my man. I hope the card is treating you well. Can't remember who it was you won, um, but I hope he's doing you well. Uh, who'd make Defo need an upgrade? Yeah, he's not amazing, I can daily, but, you know, he's, he's definitely workable, you know. Okay, I've got, I'm starting to get a lot of questions, guys. I'll do, I'll get up to Simo, hi, I'll get up to you, right, and then I'll dive back into my teams, because I need to actually do them. That's the whole point in the stream, is that I do my teams. <laughs> um, okay, so, see on Jones, opinion on Kale Sherpin, price right now, linked with Brighton. Wow. I thought he'd sealed a loan move somewhere. Like, some are crap. Like, oh. like, not Den Hag, but some some bad defensive team from last year anyway, like Pegs Wall or something like that. I thought that loan move had been sealed. Uh, Sherpin, let's have a peek at him. 0.45, steep. But he's, he's solid, man. Like, he's a, if he's playing, he'll be an amazing under 23 goalkeeper if he's playing so the point four you're paying for that you know there's not much more of an upside than that the upside on that is him becoming like well highly thought of and getting linked with the the top tier clubs now the kind of problem you've got with goalkeepers in that respect at the moment is a lot of the top the top table have a goalkeeper that is going to be there for the relative foreseeable future you know for most of your immediate so rare activity you know like um, Allison at Liverpool, Ederson. I suppose Man United one is kind of up there. PSG have just seen Donnarumma, Court Courtois, Oblak. I suppose Oblak might leave. Ter Stegen, Neuer and Nubel, that dynamic. And uh, 
Man United AC Milan. I suppose Inter Milan is still they've still got Handanovic. Inter Milan. Hopefully Inter Milan sing Keylor Navas. That would be sweet. Um Rui Patricio just went to Roma. So, so there's a few good goalkeepers around now. So these young guys, I think they are going to be really struggling to get into some of these top top teams um for the next like two or three years. So it'll be interesting to see these guys it'll be really interesting to see their careers pan out, especially walking them through it and so rare. Because you'll feel all their loan moves when they do well and you know, when these guys ultimately like somebody like this guy, if he was to make it to like elite world class level, he's a Holland number one goalkeeper, whatever, it's probably not gonna happen just in real world terms and get the big transfer to the big club or whatever until he's like maybe twenty seven or twenty eight, you know, potentially you know, a guy like this is probably gonna have to make his name at like Mooch and Gladbach and then wait for the Dortmund you know, Dortmund to want a keeper or Bayern or this team or that team, you know. Um, if you're talking about that natural kind of career span, you probably take another five or six years to to mature. But then at that point, when you get them into like the number, the undisputed number one goalkeeper of Barcelona or whatever for the following five years, will be some journey you'll go on with some of these cards. Honestly, like it's why you know I think it's really undervalued. See when we're all talking about youth cards and thinking, oh yeah, I'll buy this young guy because he's a wonder kid and you know collectors' values and rookie cards and all the rest of it. But see. If you really try and think about what if I had this, you know, like if I really did go the way through and this guy's career pans out the way I think it will, what does that actually look like? He moves to, well, he moves to Germany, you know, and or Spain, or you know, it's just fun to think about. I think, and anyway, I'm babbling on now, but I think his price is kind of yeah. You're looking for the sorry, where that tunnel came from, right? Or that rabbit hole I just jumped down was his price. So his price now is kind of built in for the next kind of portion of his career at that level at the moment in my opinion um, and to get any upside on that price in my opinion at this moment in time you're hoping his trajectory continues to kind of go quite sharply up you know over the next season or two but he's starting to get noticed by all these kind of scouting people and all the kind of people that make buzz in the football community like all these kind of scout pages and stat pages and whatever um, because the other ones that create buzz around you really if you think about it none of us read newspapers None of us like watch, you know. Like some, you might watch Sky Sports News. I never turn television on these days, you know. So I'm all about YouTube accounts that break news or cover news or whatever. So I'll, you know. <clears throat> anyway, point being, is, you know, who influences who's a hot prospect is quite limited, and you need to be aware of who influences that and what that influence has on the market for better and for worse. It's something to be very mindful of. So anyway, upside on that price requires that element to kind of come into play, in my opinion. Um, Bob Flynn, my man, good to see you, Bob. You saved me, and I actually, uh, I, I, I see after the last stream, I thought I really meant to thank Bob a lot better. But see you telling me that Barco wasn't playing. Honestly, Bob, that I, I won a super rare thanks to you, Bob. I am very much in debt to you, so thank you very much, Bob. Um, and I say it wasn't until after the last stream I thought, oh fuck, man, I really meant to thank him because at the time, you know, it was a great help and it, it made the difference. You know, it really did just raging that Lopez never got on the pitch but anyway you saved me a massive one because otherwise if I had Barco um, somewhere else in that team and it would have been full of holes and I wouldn't have got anywhere so thank you very much buddy um, you saved me there um, it was reported Peck's wall had got Sherpin it didn't go through oh due to the Brighton interest oh wow okay and then if the Brighton thing goes through of course that's this scouted football act you know like you know, he's saying, oh, it's this young, he's a Dutch under-21 international goalkeeper from Ajax and Brighton have just signed him, he's in the Prem and, oh, he just made this amazing save, he's on match of the day. That's a bit of an upside, you know, so, yeah, so I think point forward, you, if that happens, is a Brighton move a transfer or a loan? It sure makes me a wee bit, see this, I've owned this guy like three times, <laughs> bought and sold him for profit, you know, but see, seeing this right now, you do not own any card of Kel Sherpin actually hurts my soul a little bit because I've had them so many times oh so you're thinking Brighton might buy him and loan him well I suppose okay hmm. interesting because if he gets loaned he will still get reissued again you know he'll still get licensed depending on where he gets loaned to of course interesting okay right let me actually look at my teams now okay so I've got the headaches as you know I've got the headaches. I think I'll just walk, will I walk through. Brosaurus. Good to see you. Thanks very much, my man. Glad you're enjoying the content. If you are new around here, guys, make sure you do like the channel, subscribe, and blah, 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 all that stuff in the middle. 
that everyone says. Right, let's say let's have a look at what I had lined up, okay? So I was go oh, did I bin Global All Star D two? Oh, I might actually go back to that now. So I went Grand Seer and Joseph and D three with Vela, Segura and Clark is what I did the I've not looked at this in like two days. Or a day so rare time is so bizarre. Andrew references this from time to time, but um, I cannot remember. But I, it feels like a, a longer time than normal <laughs> since I last looked at my team. Um, so I'm surprised and caught off guard by it. You can probably tell. Um, I think I might just bin everything and go against. I'm thinking I might try and get a D2 out. Even with that Joseph information, because I still fancy Cabral. Oh, hold on. Have I got D2, U23? I've just been both of them anyway. U23, I've went D2, haven't I? Yes, I have. Right, what have I got over here? This may be changed. Right, Barco's going to play. Yeah, okay, I think I'm kind of sticking with all that. Defender's the only one. Like, Kessler played the last game and he got a great score. Um, But, like I said, when I picked Kessler in the last game week, he is kind of on a knife edge. There's no, real, there's no real rhyme or reason to the selection choice between him and John Bell, as far as I can tell. I would love someone who... Maybe I should just do it myself. Just try and work out the forwards or the style they were against. Is that maybe how he's making the decision? I've kind of, I was kind of hoping there was a wee bit of, you know, fitness potentially. Maybe just ease Kessler through the season, just to get him all the way through the season. Um, because the reason I went big on Kessler and got the super rare right is I heard Bruce Arena do an interview. And Bruce Arena, if you're not familiar with MLS, he's basically MLS Alex Ferguson, right? And he was saying that Kessler reminds them of Eddie Pope and Eddie Pope was like a, he's like Rio Ferdinand or something you know he's like a legend centre back at the, the teams that he won stuff with you know um, so anyway that's high praise from a guy that doesn't really dish that kind of stuff out so when I see him not playing and coming off the bench and stuff and this John Bell's playing and John Bell's looked good actually but I've seen him and he scored a goal and uh, so anyway I'm kind of bemused by the whole situation the other centre back is Andy Farrell who is going to be a mainstay at centre back well, they've got the full backs that they've got doing that job. I think Andy Farrell has naturalised in a centre back. I don't think we'll see him right back again. So I think I'm actually not really going to fuck about with this too much because I think Barco, um, who would my other options from it would be other than Barco? Because I know there's no Joseph. Does that really change anything? I've not got Efra. He's away on Mexico duty. Gutierrez is unlikely to play. I must be missing somebody. Just Efra. Where's Wanyama? Oh, Wanyama's not U23. Duh. Aye, okay, U23. I'm going, yeah, I'm going heavy. I'm putting Acevedo in there against Columbus. I'm putting Cabral in there against Vancouver or something. The LA have got a really plump fixture this game week. Champion America. Let's just bin both these teams as well. Right, okay. Can I do an all-star D2 is the first question I've got without the Joseph. So let's have a look at forwards. I'm just going to start up there. Um, I don't think I worry about used. Do I? Let's try used just in case. So I've got you, Sammy. I've got my Eric Lopez, who never made it on the pitch in the last game, but I can understand that a red card kind of prevented that. Vargas, I'm in the wilderness about right now. I don't really know what's going on there. Hmm. So Lopez, interesting. And do I have Slovak? I don't think Slovak's playing, is he? No. Now, this is it. Oh! This is, I think this is part of the reason I wanted to look at this, right? Is if Vermeer has not had the vaccine, but Titon has, <laughs> because Titon ha did leave the country for some reason last year, and so you know, so I'm sure he's been through stuff, and so I was thinking, damn, maybe take a gamble on Titon, maybe did I do it, and I thought I've got no idea, man. So let's actually just put, let's just do it. Let's just pick a bunch of super rares that. Are, I'm thinking about, I'll put Gutierrez in this team I'll put Val Valenzuela in this team because I'm not overly confident on him um, yeah, Gutierrez we'll put him in Vargas you know so I'll just put this and then I'll maybe, well, I'll maybe throw a rare in or if I got another super rare I could throw it in this and you know what it would take a lot for this to come in but it could come in you know like <laughs> and that's all that matters uh, do, I think I might even just put Higuain in this because Higuain's pissing me off. Badoya, Sunjic. Imagine I put Sunjic up. No, DNP for last game. Hmm. Jason, Morgan, Parks. By the way, Parks. 
Parks is lethal though now. See that. Pause. Kevin Paredes. Boom. <laughs> Mind made up. And we'll go Captain Valenzuela. That is get a snowball's chance in hell. But fuck it. Let's just put it out here. <clears throat> now I think Grant's here was in this team. I think that's going to happen again. Right, okay, so best goalkeeper. Right, I've got I've got three bananas. I've not got much option. I've not got much choice, do I? I don't think I'm spoiled for choice this game week. Um, Matt Turner doesn't count. Sean Johnson doesn't count. Galassi might count. And Hazel is used as his tight one. Yeah, okay, so I think I might go Steve Clark just because at home at Dallas is a decent game. Away at Columbus could be quite sketchy. But I know, actually, I'm not going to mess with it. I know Barraza will play. And Clark, you know, there is a kind of number two and a number three situation going on at Portland. I'd like to see a run of games or another game or two before I make my mind up on that. At the back, the best centre back would probably have to be somebody like Segura. I'm pretty sure I had him here already. Uh, Atlanta at home to New England. My, oh, Miles Robinson's away. No mind. Forget him. Yeah, I think it's going to be Segura. It's going to be my best player. Pozuelo. Let's pick him. Let's go for it. Oh, no, no, actually. Let's not. Because I want to get Wanyama and Grancier in here. That's what I want to do. Grancier. And then up top, we're going rare. So, are we going toy, I think? Chicharito is a gamble and Vela is like Vela's hot and then I hope it's Salt Lake but Salt Lake I think I'm going toy because at home at Cincinnati with what I just said earlier in the video I think Montreal is my team to back in this situation Big Vic is getting in the team and we'll make toy captain because I can see him scoring for sure I'm really optimistic about that global all-star D3 I think it's podium dangerous I'll say it now <laughs> that um, super rare team the other week Hasn't played in... Oh, sorry, two seconds. Val Valenzuela's back out, is he? Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, cool. Don't think I've... Hey, two seconds. I need to kind of catch up. Hey, it'd be great to see my own one. Bob Super Rare. Brosaurus. Yeah, I, I caught the Joseph thing. Um... I know you missed that, but I already kind of ranted about that. Chicharito not playing this weekend. Okay, cool. Brilliant, Mikey. Thanks for keeping me up to speed on that. I was actually went to investigate that. Um, and I uh, Valenzuela. Okay. That's a pain in the ass. Um, Gutierrez buried in the bench. Yeah, yeah, I know. That, he can still come off the bench. <clears throat> Chicharito isn't playing. Isn't Barco at the Olympics? He fucking better not be. Fucking better not be, honestly. The Olympics has started, so surely I can... No, 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 no. Barco's not in the Olympics. He's very... Barco better not be in the Olympics. Barco better not be in the Olympics. I'll cry, man. Honestly, oh, there's always something stupid going to happen, isn't there? <laughs> Barco. Olympics. 2021. Let's do it. Oh my god. He has a way for the Olympics. Oh my god, how did I miss this? Oh. Bummer. That's not Barco. Barco. Bum, 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 bum. Bummer, man. Right, okay, that changes things. Right, okay, under 23s. I didn't have any other op Oh, no, I may have another option somewhere that's not Barco. So he's down as the extra player now, so I can investigate this from an extra point of view. Under 23 super rares that have a match. Or I might even pick a rare, because I've, uh, I've got the ability to pick a rare. So that's important not to forget, rather than picking a bum. Picking a rare. Or Eric Lopez. Oh, fuck. 
Mulraney's red card's been overturned as well, by the way, is another thing to think about. He didn't start the last game, Eric Lopez. Um, so, with, Eric, with Mulraney, his red turn, it's not reasonable to assume Lopez will get minutes as a result of that. Unless it was a rest match, because he's been playing so much. Gutierrez and Vargas, I'm not counting them now. I'd rather play a rare than one of them. Okay, so what rares do we have? What rares do we have? We've got Kevin Paredes, who we put in the other one as a kind of a joke play almost. Farfan could be good. Ah, yeah, Farfan could be tasty. Um, Keaton Parks. I expect that to be a good game, but I, I like to. I like to go with fixture bias. Oh, Mason Toy. I really should just put Mason Toy in this team, shouldn't I? That is the answer. Mason Toy. That is the answer. Put him in the best team. That is the best team. Kessler is the only question mark, but I don't think it's too... I don't think it's too bad of a... I'm worried about that now, because I really had big hopes for Mason Toy this game week. Hmm. I'm eager not to overlook this New England situation. What I'm checking now is the yellow cards. And then I'm probably just going to drop a Twitter search on New England or on Kessler or something. I just. Oh, that bark line just kicked me right in the buzz. <laughs> right in the buzz. Um, okay, so the. And they lost to Toronto in the last match, didn't they? Fuck, they started the last game and lost against the team that were getting pumped by everybody. But I say, it was that turnaround game, you know, that was the first game of the locker room, controlling it. Didn't get yellow carded or anything, that's good to know. I think the goalkeeper, John Bell, stayed on the bench. So yeah, they were against it for, were they against it for the large portion? Yeah, they went, went behind rapid and he didn't get subbed, he stayed on for the whole game. I think that's an important sign. Hmm. Also makes me think that he's played a full 90 minutes. Because this is one thing... Oh, you can't see this stupid page I'm looking at now, sorry. But um, I'll show you this. Right? This is one thing that got me thinking about Kessler. And you might see patterns like this in your players as well. Because in the MLS, J-League and whatever, we all know rotation happens, right? And what you're trying to suss out with a coach um, is... Exact, is is their pattern of rotation so when I look at Kessler right he started the he started the last two but he has went through a wee phase of starting games and then like not featuring and stuff so <clears throat> so I look at this team here this is basically when the season started started a bunch got a minute so you think maybe he's been injured or something on the bench didn't come on 90 minutes 10 minutes 90 minutes 23 minutes 90 minutes so the last game there was the first time he played back to back 90 minutes there was five days between the matches and previously that wasn't really too much of a difference between a lot of these matches four days and four days and that one there between the 90 minutes and the 10 minutes was a month you know so it's a weird i don't know it's i, I think it's an odd kind of rhythm that's happening to it uh, but anyway i'm happy to run with it especially now that i've looked he's not got a yellow so I'm about that. and i will twitter search it and check it out so another forward option would be Vela, which I don't think is a bad option at all. <laughs> to be honest with you, it stacks up with the Segura, and then I've got two boss midfielders that I think are going to do very well this game week, and that's still a really good D three option. So I'm happy to put Toy up there, and I'm just hoping, hoping against hope that the Kessler doesn't um, egg on our face situation. Do we have a different option for? I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll put um, we'll swap Paredes. Well, we'll swap Paredes for Lopez. Because I do think, like, Gutierrez can come off the bench. Yeah, let's get Lopez involved in this one. Where are you? Where's Lopez? I don't have any other super rares, I don't think, anymore now. I've got Medina. I've still got Medina, huh? I've got this boy who... Uh, I've only really got Medina, I think, left as another super rare, which is... So weird how that's and again he has a punt anyway, so would I want to put him next to Medina and oh hold on a minute. I'm so late with forwards now, it's just kinda of, okay, let's just put him there. Boom. And then Valenzuela, we know he's not playing now. So somebody who won't 
I know probably won't make the team. Hang right, let's put Farfan. Okay, let's put Farfan in this team. <coughs> and then we'll captain... Chicago Nashville. Well, captain will be good to get since I like him. Shamrock cards, Team Kessler, boom. Ho I'll hopefully see you at the top with his 100 that he'll both be carrying us with. <laughs> Looks like we need to go shopping, I think you're right. Uh, I've only been playing for about two months, bro, saw this, and there's always something weird. There's always, man, honestly, COVID football. This is what, I, I, I said this a while ago and I didn't really kind of follow up, but this is COVID football, man, still, like, the calendar. And, you know, I was saying this back when I think the channel was just doing Football Index content or maybe Footstock, but the Qatar World Cup being in the winter... Like, really should give everyone a great kind of... The calendar's fucked, but you know what? We don't need to condense everything down because the World Cup that is normally... And the World Cup is probably the most immovable of objects in the football calendar. It has already moved, and it's moved back by, like, four months. So, you know, surely we can stretch some things out, but then you drop the fucking Olympics in it, and then you've got the Nations League, and you've got the Euros, and you've got this fucking Gold Cup, and then you've got Champions Leagues and all the continents, you've got... So much stuff going on, qualifiers and everything in between. So, but anyway, there's been no real effort for that. You know, the Premier League when Qatar's on. I heard this in the radio a few days ago, um, maybe Wednesday or something, Tuesday. They were saying like um, the Premier League's going to stop for like two, the, like a week before the World Cup or something like that. And it's like that's not enough time for these guys to get into Qatar and get acclimatized, man. Like, cause it's never been, but by all accounts, an oven. You know, and if you're going to be playing high level elite sport in such alien conditions which is what they are, will be for the vast majority of the participants is not fair it gives everyone a kind of level playing field I suppose because some people might adapt quicker than others and if everyone's dropped in the deep end then I might level things a, a little bit I suppose but I know that's not the design of it it's just that they don't want to take a hit in the arm on TV money for longer than they need to or want to check Rotowire predictive lineups I think I might do that actually um, it's a full time job if you can say that again but it's, it's just COVID football, man. So if, because everything's so condensed, Champions League's got more games. There's a new UEFA tournament coming out for clubs that kicks in the season. Um, you know, it's just more and more football, which is good, right, as well. But it's just fucking... The Olympics are a pain in the ass I don't need. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, I don't need the Olympics at all. Right, okay. So I think I'm going to throw the Steve Clark into here. Go ball star D4. I want to put a kind of serious team in it, but now I'm kind of realising what I've got. Let's throw in the... I'll throw, I guess I'll throw Brad Smith in here. Actually, what I need to do is I'm going to go do my America D3 lineup because that's going to be my next best one because I've only got the Medina super rare. And any false super rares I've got, I need them in this team. So my next high-powered Barraza is 4%, so I'll play him here. Right, best defender, undoubtedly, is going to be Danny Wilson at home at San Jose. Ooh, Danny Wilson should boss it. Pozuelo, of course, it needs to be Higuain at this point. And then Zella, just playing all the biggies. Oh, no, no, I've got Medina still, don't I? Yeah. Oh, hold on. So, I don't have any super rare forwards, do I? I don't have any defenders unless I use that Ronald Hernandez guy. And I'm not really... Yeah, let's go Pozuelo and Medina. Right, okay, so <clears throat> I'm hopeful Medina can carry this team. We'll, we'll go Captain Pause. Hopefully this team can do something, man. I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility. Higuain has got a huge multiplier for me. I'll show you again. Um, because he's not got his new MLS card. 11% multiplier on him. 27% on the super rare. Captain's doing well. Danny Wilson, I've had that card so long. You've got no idea how long that XP has taken to grow. And yeah, so I, anyway, that, that could bag me something. Oh, do you know what? I've not even looked at the price pools with these because the price pools are fucking great this week, if I'm, if I'm right in remembering. Um, so we'll go Global D4. I think, I think I'm doing quite well now, guys. I'm actually quite happy with how this is laying out. Um, we'll put the Stevie Clark in here. Along with the Brad Smith. Yeah, because he's got a good fixture. Um... And then I guess we'll put Zella Ryan in here. There's no Chicharito, so I'm looking for maybe Usami. Yeah, I'm looking for Usami. Don't think I'm going to have a forward for another team, by the way. 
maybe didn't go shopping. Um, an extra player. Who's my next best player? Kevin Paredes is a shout. Farfan would be a shout if I was already playing him somewhere. So I got Mensa, Parks, Morgan. Hmm. No one's really standing out to me here. You know that. Hmm. Sorry, I've moved my camera position. I don't know why, but I'm having a feeling like Ben Manic ruined it. There we go. Just move it like this. There we go. That's better. Um. Hmm. No real jump outs so far. Hmm. Paredes has to get in a team, eh? His form's too good. But the other way to Philly, which is like, wow, what a fixture that screams avoid. <laughs> way too Philly. Eh, avoid. I don't know. Yeah. I think I'm kind of probably just playing Morgan for loyalty and his multiplier 7%. Hmm. But Doya. Potencio. Yeah, I think I'm playing for Red Is. Roll with the wee man's form. We've got two one of our hundreds in midfield, that's cool, isn't it? And we'll go Captain Zella. I hope with Sammy plays, he's just a wee bit of a rotation risk because he's played a lot of football, they've just had Champions League and all the rest of it. But I think I'm stuck for a forward now. Like really stuck. Um Which annoys me. Yeah, I don't have that many forwards playing this week, eh? I don't have that. You can't see behind the camera, but the only person under uh, my head here is Higuain. So I don't actually have a fucking forward. So um, if Vanny said Chicharito isn't playing... What does that mean for me? Hmm. <sighs> right. Let's go to the market. I see... Let's see if I can get a bug. Right, okay, so we're going to do price. Oh, what's the price at ETH at the moment? Right, what's that, 42 quid? Let's try it. Be fucking... There we go. Oh. I've done this before. I've just done this one. There we go, 40 pound, I should do it. Namara, Bolster, Moyles. Not too much for your money down here, is there? Patrick Mullins. <sighs> oh, I'd buy a Paddy Mullins. He played against the Revs. Oh, he came off the bench, didn't he? I love a wee bit of Paddy Mullins. A former NYC inaugural season player. Um, and I've kind of long wanted him for the cheap because he played Champions League for Toronto. And I thought, Fuck man, I should have a Patrick Mullins in my team. How do I not have one? He does always come off the bench. Akinola should be away now. This is the game, I think this is the game we get by Patrick Mullins. Right, let me just have a wee peek around to make sure I've not missed anyone else on the next page potentially. True lad, I think you're. Where's John Bell? Oh, Dom Dwyer. Oh, I love a Dom Dwyer. Don't think Dom's playing, but. Cameron Dunbar? Ooh, you're in a galaxy, aren't you? Oh, yes, you are. That may be by Cameron Dunbar. Oh, okay. So I, actually, guess this is actually... This is actually fun. Right, okay, so Dom Dwyer. I don't think I'm buying Dom Dwyer. I really... I really... <laughs> There's a two of a hundred as well, man. I'd, I'd like to get the Dom Dwyer. We come off the bench. Oh, he's at he's at Toronto as well. Oh, he could just become unlocked, man. Oh, oh. When Dom Dwyer was at Kansas, like I just won so much money betting on him for any time goal scorer. I've got this mad attachment to him. <laughs> um, oh, gee, I've got some good options down here, man. Dom Dwyer, Cameron Dunbar might be the one. Mullins. Yep, I think we're all still here. Just check me on the live stream, guys, in the chat. Just give me a thumbs up, somebody. First person that hears me saying this. Just drop a thumbs up and let me know what's going on. Um, on your end. Mm. 
Josie's back. Oh, I suppose, yeah. Josie, but oh, yeah, I can all his away. But what I'm thinking is there is two... Sp yeah, there is two spots. I think that's where my gut was going to take me. Yeah, we're good. Okay, you're sorted. Magic. Thanks very much, guys. Um, I can hear... I don't know if you just can't know, but I can hear... I'm going to turn my mic down a little bit, just in case you can hear a wee bit of background noise. But, um... Alex Dobbins has joined us. Good to see you, my man. It looks like we're all back in town. Good stuff. Um, but, yeah, so... Josie came back in, uh, Akinola being away, so there's a, a wee bit of a, a reshuffle, but what I want to see is kind of like who's been the most, who's been the close. I know Patrick Mullins has been quite close to the first team, but how close is Dom Dwyer? And who came on for who is information I want to know. <laughs> Jesper Scott says thumbs up. <laughs> Love it. Right, so let's check squad. I want to have a wee look at Dom. So I wanted to buy a Dom Dwyer on last season, and he didn't have a card. I wanted to buy a Patrick Mullins last season, but he was too cheap and too naff, and I never had much of a need or urge. Right, okay, so he's just getting some minutes here and there. If I click on this game, that's just a pop-up, right? So you got 59 minutes. Did he start? I think he did start, by the way, and I was like, shit, I should have bought him. He started with Mullins. So that's when there was no Akinola and no Josie. You get 15 minutes in the hammering. Who did he come on for? He came on for Akinola, and the shape was 3-4-3, three, three, kind of weird one. And then in the New England game, he came on for Soteldo. And Mullins came on for Akinola, and the shapes that we're playing now that the manager is out, it's a 4-3-2, Soteldo was out there. Yeah, they probably went to two up top. So I think if they go two up top is when the wire is going to play. Or maybe Dwyer will play. Oh, no, no, Josie's going to play. So if Josie's playing, yeah, I don't think any of them are going to start, actually. Okay, so... Damn it. No Dwyer and no Mullins this game week. Oh, two seconds, guys. This is glitchy de glitched. If the wee cutout we had on the stream... Checking out Brosaurus, thanks for popping in and seeing us. <clears throat> I might just go. Oh, Jesus, what's happened here? Oh, is this us again? We're back to. Let's see, price. I've got it at zero. Let's get back to there. Uh, Position forward favorites, yeah, of course it's uh, the Bjorn Johnson. Hmm, <laughs> Pavel, <laughs> is he playing by the way? Is he getting back? Oh, he's not really getting in the team, is he? But I think he's on for a good fixture, man. Will they play him together? When it's just, I think I might even just be too cheap not to buy, you know, in general, by the way. Hamwana Bamwana. Hand what can I say it? Can I wait for this big guy for a while? Well, he's been DNP and maybe I don't want him anymore. I guess this is now sorted by cheapest, whereas before I had it sorted by best I best value. So where's my I can get Cameron Harper. He fits my Celtic team. He's not been playing. Alex Dobbins joining the team. Good to see you, my man. We are doing the latest member stream is on, I think, oh, I can't remember. There's a, if you go on my YouTube channel and you have the community tab, you'll see my posts. And depending on what level of member you're at, Alex, thanks all again for joining us. Um, you'll be able to see the appropriate information to get you up and running and get you going. I think I just need to do, um, can I do that? Is that a game week fill? I'm pretty sure they've said something about that. No. Um, I'm going to SO5 MLS Champion America. I want to see. Was it, was it Cameron Dunbar? I feel this has drastically changed since when I looked at it a minute ago. Is, some, is one of you dirty buggers just went and stole the Cameron Dunbar? No, he's having good. 
Okay, so well, who else was there? I don't know. It's not me saying it. I'm not going to the auction house for this one. Legend Alex. Right, okay. So <coughs> let's start this again. Right. Price. Oh, what's the price that you found this in? Forty-two pound. Right, okay. So we want to be about. We want to be at forty-two. Forty-eight. Let's do forty-eight, and also we know we're at forty-two. SO five league champion America. Favorites on position forward. Oh, is that Dunbar? Ah, exactly. Dom Dwyer, Dunbar, Mullins. I think I'm going to buy the Dunbar, by the way. Oh, there's only two pages worth yet. Yeah, I'm buying the Dunbar. Bavarian Beasts, Big Dom. Oh, is it? It's a wee bit more ETH than what I've got. Oh, you fucking bastard. Hmm. That's a kick in the balls. I guess I can just punt out. Jabba the Hutt will buy for like nothing. <laughs> oh, I'll just do a direct offer actually. We'll play these sounds. That's what I'll do. Dunbar. If you're watching Dom, it's not that me cheeky or anything, it's just that's all that's in my wallet, pal. And uh, happily buy this guy off you. You're happy to accept. We help a man out. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> That's fine. Don't worry about the Eve. Hopefully, Dom's sound. If not, we'll find somebody else. We'll see what happens. He might, he might come in saying he's rejected my offer. How embarrassing would that be? Uh, um, so I think I'm kind of waiting on finishing a D4 lineup if I can get Dunbar in there. Dun Dunbar will be a super sub and it's just like, it's cheap enough and it's Dom's cards. If any of you are selling a card that I could use, I'd buy that for 0.03. Um, especially weekly, I've not got a chance of getting that. And I think, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Without the, let's see who else we'll have to put around the camera in Dunbar. So we've got a, a wee Baraza. We've got a Mensa. Just checking if there's anyone else. No, we've got Mensa. Now, the only reason I don't want to put Mensa in a different team is because they're playing New York and I really would rather New York did well rather than Mensa. We'll put Morgan in here. We will put Dunbar, but we'll play save him, I suppose, with Chicharito. And then the last spot in the team would have to go to. Um, is it Keaton Parks? It probably is. Bedoya, Asensio, yeah, it's Parks. This will be an okay wee team. Might do something, probably won't. But if it did, hey, cool. And uh, let's just captain. Let's captain Parks because his form is good. Quick question, Quinny. If a player moves to China, yes, their scores dose to it. I've got a guy from China in my club. Um, he's playing this game week. He might be. His name's Tony Sunjic. He's got a Dynamo Moscow card. And he played like six games last season. And his average was like 70 or something. I thought, ooh. This guy could be a replacement for Mickey Yamin. He cost me buttons and I thought, brilliant. Even if it's just for six months or something, that'll do me. And it's not really been the case. DNP'd the last game, so I'm not too worried. But this guy plays in the China Super League for Henan Jain. I'm pretty sure Arnautovic has cards, of, and he's still in the, the Chinese League, I think. I don't really know what's going on with Arnautovic. But yeah, so yes, it, China's a... Depending on your player, a really good move. Some Porto guys have went there recently, and I think they're doing well. Um, so yeah, I think that's where we're at, guys. I think we're waiting on the bold Dom accepting our offer or not. I know this is not past his bedtime. Mm -mm -mm. As well, after doing the depth charge video and talking about all that stuff as well, like I've yeah, buzzing man. And I was really excited for this game week. So I thought I'll have Joseph, I'll have Wanyama, I'll have Medina, I'll have this one, that one, this and that, and Hazel and. 
everything will be sweet and I'll just have such strength everywhere and we'll do great. And then it's like, nope, nope. And then even tonight, Bar goes away to the Olympics. I fucking missed it. Kicking the balls. But I think I've actually got... A, well, let's have a look at it again before we close out tonight, guys. The strongest team we've got. Under 23 D2. I'm playing all my favourites here, really. The rare toy I'm hoping can be false super rare level. I just think Cincinnati are always on the ropes and they've just got another monkey wrench thrown at them um, this game week. So... Cabral's in great form. Vancouver are awful. We do have hassle and goals, I know that. But he is one of the very few super rare under-23 goalkeepers that will be in this division. So I'm happy that that gives me a standing in the league straight away. And then if Acevedo can get himself a 60-70 to 70 without any decisive actions, sweet. Same with uh, Henry Boy. If he can get 50-plus, I'll be happy. This team could easily get into the same position I got into last game week. Let's have a look at the prize pools. I've still not done that. And Mikey commented earlier, let's hope they fix the glitch, fix the glitch like they mentioned. I personally, like, I, I think fixing the glitch is the absolute minimum. I think if they've admitted fault, there should be some sort of retrospective, like, squaring up of some kind, I think. You know, I think that's only right, man. People do put a fair amount of wedge in, and if they've, if you've made a mistake on the thing, you're happy to come out and admit it and fix it. I think a wee bit, you, you, there needs to be some sort of give back, you know, definitely. Um, and I think there will be. So we've got fairy entrance in, wow. Top three are going to be pulling something. Yeah, and that needs to be my best team. This game week, that needs to be my best team. Barco being out. I suppose Barco's out for other people, and hopefully they didn't watch the stream because other people didn't, and they played Barco last game week when he was... Oh, is that why he was out last game week? I thought it was just he didn't travel for some reason or whatever. A wee knock or something. But yeah, so man, 30%. That's good, man. And... um. Star Super Bear at the six entrance. Oh, yeah, man. Uniques, man. I need a, one or two of them there and again, don't we? Um, the prize pool for we've got three. Oh, yeah, we've got the pure punty team in Global D two. What is the best we could hope for? They finished nineteenth. That would be alright, by the way. How many entrants? Ninety one. <laughs> yeah, stranger things have happened. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to count my chickens on that. Star Wars all the way back to 16th. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, and that team I've got in there is lethal. Let's have a look at the prize pool here. Star Rares and Global this week. Um, <laughs> Neymar, Louis, Alisson, Courtois, Davies, Van de Voort, Goretzka, Martinez. It's a who's who. It is a who's who. Who of star rares in the global pool? Oh, look at this. Where does it get bad? It's really, you know, maybe about now-ish. Oh, I suppose not really. Oh, Nana. Imagine you got a Malin. Oh! <laughs> Some great star rares out there. Javi Simons, I'm not too... I don't think he's quite up there, is he? Everson, question mark. Um, Jota, Bastoni, question... Okay, we're getting to the bottom of the pool. I can kind of accept that, I suppose. But maybe this pool is just a wee bit too big. Paqueta, no, no, Matt Turner. There's still some really good cards in here, actually. Yeah, it's a bit of a sandwich, isn't it? How, it is a big pool, by the way. There's a lot. Woof, there is a lot going on in here. Some really good cards, but all the way down it. Damsgaard has been up in value since his Euros exploits. Look at that picture. He looks like 12 or something. Yeah, guys. Global All Star D3. I said it in the depth charge video. It's a league that FC Barcelona takes very seriously. Tier 1s, is there much, I think all the good cards are in the star. quiz. <laughs> Zuba would be cheeky. And our Van Osh would be cheeky. I think these guys would be sweet. Decent tier 1s, yeah. A bit happy enough than most of these. Oh yeah, Boscagli. Yes, I'm okay. I love that. And uh, Champion America. Let's see what their star rares look like. Ochoa, Everson. Gil, yeah. Acevedo, yeah. Okay, goalkeeper's all fine. Busio, yes. Vela, De La Cruz. Yeah, okay, I suppose the star rares up here are Hulk, yeah. Okay, cool. I quite like that. Caden Clark, yeah. Champion America looks good. So let's have a look at um, Champion America payout. Champion America D3 is my main one. 
Whoa, Star Raiders back to 16th there as well. Wow. And uh, 70th for tier twos. It's a great percentage of winners there. I'm getting. I think my. I think my team is. It's decent, isn't it? Is this under 23? No. See my America under D3. Oh, I'm going in there with one super rare. Oof. Well, if I get a star rare, I'm not going to be at the top of the pool, I don't think. But there's not much I can do about that at this point. I'm not really getting any. I'll be playing Lopez over one of the. Yeah, I think I can do as good as I can with the teams I've got out. I think the price pool is like amazing. Like it seems like the glitch is fixed because all those guys don't have games and oh, I wish Joseph was playing. <laughs> I wish Barkov was playing. Uh, and I wish Matt Turner didn't get called up. <laughs> A podium to Global All Star this week. Yes, way Jose. Well done, man. First podium ever. Very well done. Missed a star rare by one place. Ouch, unlucky. How do you get podium and not get a star rare in D3? Oh, it was, oh, it was a mega quiet game week. Oh, that's, oh, that's hard, hard lines, man. Hey, hello, Tino. Who's Tino? Did I miss something there? Who's Tino? Um... So yeah, and I'm buzzing for this. Vela now, yeah, Vela and the gang. I think this is a solid. That, that's a, that team are hunting down star rares. That's what that team is doing all day. Let's do it, man. Buzzing for that. Really good. I'm happy. I'm happy with the big under twenty threes. Yeah, I'm really happy with what I'm going for this game week. I do need to get this Cameron Dunbar or some other striker that will get off the bench to do another lineup. And ideally someday I'd be after it anyway. I don't like doing purchases like that, but if it's somebody that is playing regular enough and like a Josh Atencio type, you know, I'd buy somebody like him for a game week. Martino Reagan. Oh, Tino. <laughs> Got it. Long time no speak. No. You boys been avoiding each other? Is there some beef I should know about? Um, I think this team could do well. What's the payouts for Global All Star D4? The Paredes, I suppose, is a wee bit question marky. Um, Star Rare down to 8 is solid enough, I suppose. Yeah, I'm not really hoping for that. If we do. Who did I put in that Champion America D4? Is there anyone here I would play over Paredes? Philly man, it's just such a hard game. Hmm. Parks is in such good form. I think I would swap Parks with. Um, who did I just say there? Kevin Paredes. I'll put Paredes over here. Because I do just feel a bit more comfortable. I know he's just shot 100, right? And he is in good form. But Philly away is like. Uh, no, I can't do it. I'll be jinxing everything if I do it. Or Marco Farfan. All star D2. Right, let's put Farfan in there, screw it. Oh! Aye, so I'm putting Farfan in here. No, 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 screw this. I'm messing, I'm, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Who's actually going to drop? Farfan for Paredes actually, yeah, would I do that? Yeah, I probably would. Farfan for Paredes, we're going to swap them two around. Because um, Farfan is in a punty team anyway. That was fun. Oh, because I've got him selected as a midfielder there, sorry. Farfan. And then you for who was here? Zella? Pozuelo? Zella, there we go. Captain Zella. Okay, that's I feel I feel we got better with that, yeah. And then we'll put we Kev up in the D two punt. Oh no, because I need him for defence. <laughs> oh you got a tick, Quinny. Oh you got a tick. Oh, let's just put you in there. Screw it. There we go. Yay! 
Yeah. That works. And I'm not playing Paredes now. <laughs> I feel bad, man. I, oh, it's such a, yeah, such a bad fixture. I cannot back it. And I'm happy with that. Yeah. So, okay, guys. I think I'm going to get out of here. Thanks a lot, guys, if you've enjoyed the stream. Thanks a lot for joining me live. After we've been live, through the little one-minute glitch there, a 10-second glitch, however long it lasted. Thank you very much again, guys. Um, good luck this game week. I hope you do well. I hope you see us in the podiums. One thing I will finish off in the stream with, Twitter is like disabled fleets so it's destroyed them or whatever so i'm going to start doing pack reward opening things is youtube shorts so i've kind of figured out how to do that it's actually really easy and i don't know why i've not been doing it this whole time so uh keep your eyes open for them i'm not really too sure how you'll be able to find them i'm pretty sure if you see subscribe to the channel it'll just come in your subscription feed and um, so make sure you do that and all the other stuff guys and um, there's more stuff coming out and i will see you monday and there's a member stream next week as well um Thanks a lot, guys, and if you're watching this after we've been live, YouTube will now show you some stuff that you might like to watch. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.